Morning boys and girls, um, beautiful day here in England, um, halfway through May and the only thing spawning it is a hangover and the Pendleton has uh, stopped responding to the pedal being cranked um, and it looks like, I've had a peek in there, it looks like the disc that holds the magnets is just completely disintegrated. Uh, I can show you, I'll, I'll turn it upside down and get a better look. So if I turn the crank, you can see most of it has gone. This is the, the disc. Um, there's one or two magnets in there, but most of them have fallen off. So the whole thing's shattered. I'm guessing because it was left in a warm garden house uh, that uh, the magnets expanded and, and fractured the plastic. That's all I can assume. Anyway, I'm going to try and get... Oh, it's the wrong way around. Try and get this the right way around. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is try and get the pad sensor out. It's not the sensor, it's the disc that holds the magnets that trigger the sensor and see if it can be salvaged or it needs replacing or repairing. Anyway, let's uh, get the crank off. Now it is, it is the left hand, is it right? no it's the right hand crank so we need to get in here and get this little plastic cat. What's the matter? It's plastic. And then uh, we're going to have to get this bolt out which holds the crank to the shaft. Yeah, and this tool, you're going to need one of these. It's a common or garden crank puller. Uh, two things to say about it. it it's, um, it's best to get a good one if you're going to be using them often. The diameter of this pusher here has to match the gap in there because what happens is this threads on here to the inside of the crank. The crank's just wedged on really tightly, as you might imagine, for safety reasons. Uh, this this hooks onto this crank, <clears throat> and then you just wind this spindle in here until it's pushed in against the um, the shaft and forced by pulling on here, force the crank away. As I say, it's just wedged on, but it's a bugger to get off. Um, We just wind this in until it hits the stop, and then we just turn this. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> no, I don't have to take anything else off, do I? No, I don't. I hope not. <laughs> okay, cut cannot tell you how difficult that was. I used various tools and extensions and pipe extensions and eventually it started to come and here it is. But I, I honestly thought the damn thing was welded uh, to, to the shaft. It, 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 I just felt it was going to... It was on so tight it was unbelievable. So here we go, we'll get that off. Oh, looks like I'm going to have to take this off as well. Idiot. There's a magnet. And walk around. We'll look some more on the inside here. Ah. One, two, three, four, five. They don't go very far, I guess, when they when they break off. But you see what's happened here. This is. I mean, I've I've, I've got four, eight e-bikes, as I say, and I've been, built four of them. And this is a very wide pad sensor. They're normally a lot smaller than this, and only five or eight magnets. So twelve magnets and a very wide 
very wide pad sensor, but completely buggered. Uh, it says www.king-meter.com on there, magnet disc for EPAC. Anyway, I'm going to take a look and see what we can do online. Okay. Well, here's a better look at it now. I mean, honestly, it, it's fractured obviously along these lines here where the holes are. Obviously, it's the weakest point, but also, also where the metal expands. Uh, it just seems astonishing that these weren't put in something that could handle the expansion. The, the, of course, the symptoms were, were for every turn of the crank, I was only getting, you know, one sixth of the available power. So it was going, ooh, ooh, looking like an idiot, trying to wonder what the hell's going wrong. I didn't actually notice it until it was a mile into my journey because I, wasn't, I didn't use uh, electrical power, uh, battery power. So uh, anyway, here's, here's the pad sensors that came with my electric bike builds and unfortunately they are the wrong size. This is, this is, this is eight centimeters across, this is just over six, six and a half centimeters across. So it's going to be placing the magnets in the wrong position, not close enough to the sensor to, um, to uh, trigger it. So what I'm going to have to do is, uh, I'm going to have to, well, uh, I'm going to pull the magnets out of this, I'm going to create a 3D print file and um, I'm going to um, print that off and uh, start to uh, design my own PAS sensor wheel uh, using the magnets out of this one here. So I'll, I'll be doing a few bits of measurement and creating a 3D design for you. Now I've measured the, the squared off spindle and um, 8 centimeters diameter uh, the magnets obviously I'm using are a different dimension from the ones in the uh, in the Pendleton um, disc so I've adjusted the diameter to fit the magnets I'm going to be scavenging out of, out of the other uh, pad sensor I didn't use. I didn't fit the pad sensor because I was very happy with the throttle control only um, I know that's illegal in the UK, Europe, you need to have a pad sensor it's one of the re requirements I understand uh, but I didn't need it, didn't want it, so I just removed it and set the controller to ignore any pad sensor restrictions. Um, the other thing you can do is you can fit the pad sensor uh, to the front or the back wheel, so you don't have to actually have to pedal, and you think, oh, hang on a minute, how do you stop? Well, the brakes are often, nearly always, they should be linked to the uh, micro, the, to the e-bike controller, and as soon as you pull the brake, it will cut the power anyway, so the brakes will still work, it won't be you working against the the pad sensor telling the uh, motor to, to, to uh, rock and roll. Uh, well, I'd, look, do that at your own discretion uh, and you know, don't blame me if you uh, uh, get into problems with that. So now, now this is finished, uh, uh, what I'm doing is I'm printing off uh, the uh, disc in resin, that, that's the uh, any cubic photon uh, 3D printer, uh, STL file. There's a link at the bottom if you want to download this STL file. And remember, I've squared off the center, so it, 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 it's, it's not one of those adjustable ratchet centers. It's a squared off center to fit the Pendleton. It might fit other bikes as well, but anything with an 8 centimeter 12 magnet requirement, it should be pretty good to go, or you can modify it to your own needs. So you'll find that in the description below. <laughs> Okay, one finished 3D printed pad sensor. It took me a lot longer because, well, the magnets uh, seem to be very attracted to each other, trying to slot them into the holes. They were. They were jumping together, but I've hot glued the backs of them. I've matched the polarity with the one I took off, so that should be the outward size. I, I believe, you know, with a reed centre, it wouldn't really matter, but these are uh, probably hall centres or something similar. So, um, uh, polarity should work. And I'm just going to hot glue it onto the, the shaft. It needs to be about three mils away from. Three mil away from the um, sensor here. That's a little bit close. I'll just take that away a little bit. 
Turn the crank around, make sure it's. Yep, now it's pretty, pretty flush and set and aligned. One pad sensor fitted. All right, assemble the bike and uh, see if we've got traction again.